So that's that and I wanted to have a look at what happens when I do a piece of card that's too big for my go press okay so I'm probably just going to start this one off um, and then you'll see that the finished card in the blog post okay or I might briefly turn the camera back on when I finished and just show you the foiling so I'm going to use for this one this big hot foil stamp this is thorny branches okay um so i've marked up the back i need to mark my center point at the front so let me just get my pencil actually get my pokey tool i have to come off my glass mat so i can see what i'm doing and do it at the number one so i can see what i'm doing let's put a mark so I can see that up front and I might just go with my pencil as well. There we are. So I'll trim that tiny bit off at the end. So now I want to decide where I want this. So bearing in mind that I've got my marks I'm going to see in line with my number one. So I want to take this out to the edge. And I want to be able to be fairly sure that when I rotate it round that I know what I'm lining up. So if I take, if I take, what can I line up? If I take the end of this leaf nearly to the edge of the card, but then have that bit there in the quarter mark then I know that I can bring it round a quarter turn and line up again. There we are. So, got that in position. I just need my magnet, which I've put down somewhere. Put it back in the place where I keep it. Okay, so I've got my magnet. So, let me bring my GoPro and foil over just for this part. And again, I'm doing this on white card so you can see my guidelines easily, but this could be on pattern paper. So I'm going to turn this over. And this is why I need that extra mark. So I've got a mark I can line up there in the centre. And you can see the card overhangs the sides of my GoPro and foil. And that's not going to work because the hot foil stamp is too far over. Okay, so that isn't going to work. So it's got to be in the position where the hot foil stamp will fit. So let me have another think about that. So the hot foil stamp has to fit, even if the card doesn't. So let's turn this over again. And just think about how this is going to fit on. So if I take, yeah, that's better. If I take that top leaf up to the edge there, have that on there, yeah. Then when I put that on my hot fast stamp, it'll be in the middle and it's far enough from all the edges that it will fit. Okay, so yeah, that's not going to move. Is that going to give me enough of a, a wreath look? I don't know if it is. I think maybe I want to swing it a bit. It goes around in a circle more. Mm, let's do that. Let's bring it over. So it needs to end up in the middle of the GoPress and foil. And let's do. Where did it? Oh, I had last time. I think it's ringing out too far, I think. This is an experiment. I've not tried this one before. So 
comes right now in the middle. Like that. That should work. So now I've got this coming around here. Okay, so we'll give it a try. Sometimes you only know by having a go. So if I put this down now and again line it up in the middle. I've got a little mark on my card just there to line up with. And I can line up with the plastic at the bottom. And that fits now. So that's that's going to get nicely heated. So that needs to warm up. I'm going to need some quite big pieces of foil for this one. Um, and let's have a look at foils while we're waiting for that to warm up. So I've used my rose gold already. Don't really want to use that one. And mm, see, I've got brought out some foils that I thought might kind of work together earlier. So I could go for the iridescent and the glitterable. Might be a bit much. I could go for the turquoise and the blue. Or I could go for some green and some purple. Or I could go for the purple and the silver. I think I might go for, what's that one? This is purple foil, deep mirror finish. And the silver foil iridescent speckled pattern. I, think I might do those two. Right. Oh, I've got some more here. Yeah. Some I've forgotten. I've got a brighter pink. Ooh. I've got pink and gold. Now I've got for choice. Mm hmm. Now I'll stick with the silver and the purple. I think I might have too many foils. <laughs> but I'm not sure you could ever really have too many foils. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the silver first. So that kind of goes into the background. Pull my go press over and just measure my foil. into my card now. Right, I'm going to put the magnet away before it causes chaos. Right, so I've put a little cut on this in the right place and I am going to use my piece of card to put a guideline on my foil so I cut it straight. Just gonna like I did before, roughly I uh, put fold where I need to cut this to get it to the right sh kind of shape. You don't want lots of foil overhanging your hot foil stamp because that's quite often how you get over foiling because bits of foil hang down and 
they they touch the card when the card is hot so they stick and it tends to be corners out of this side because it's got a huge chunk of it that doesn't get foiled across there do make sure when you're cutting your foil to the right shape that you've got it shiny side down doing this otherwise you'll cut it the reverse shape to what you actually need okay no, i just need to be up there okay, i'm gonna put this on to make sure it's hot and i'm gonna get a piece of the same sort of card I've got a scrap here. And I need a scrap of my foil. And I shall do a test. See how many shims I need. Um, and I'm going to get my large shims out. Because this is a big hot foil stamp. So I keep my shims and I reuse them most of the time. Occasionally if I've got something very how can I put it? With some, some broad foiling areas on it that I think might easily not get foiled, then I'll um, make some new ones. Because sometimes all the, the, the texture that your shims pick up can get transferred into your foiling. That means you get little mist spots right so I'm going to start with three shims and see if that works so I'm going to turn this around here make sure that's in focus yep right okay so let's choose which bit we want foiled I think I'm gonna go across ooh, across there maybe yep I think that'll be a good area to test on Yep, put my piece of card on. And then my shims. Red light's just come back on, so I'm just going to wait for that to um, sort itself out. And turn green again so that I know everything's hot enough. That's fine. Put the camera to focus on it. There we are. That's foiled really nicely. So I can go ahead now and start foiling my wreath. So I can't remember which way around the foil was going to go. So that there. Starting with my number one, and I'm putting it in the middle of the go dress, lined up the centre. And I have got card overhanging at the edges here, but I've got a an A4 size die cutting machine, so that won't matter. Okay, my shim's on top. 
and that can go straight through my die cutting machine. That's a big hot force stamp, so I'm going to just roll it again. So I need to cut more foil and do my other four positions. So I'm going to stop the camera for a minute while I do that. Right, so cut all my foil and it's nice and hot. So this is for number two pass on the silver. So number two. really want to show you how quick this can be quite glad of these numbers it makes it much quicker um, than it does if you have to keep looking and deciding which one you haven't done yet Go. So the last one in this colour. You see, I'd have at this point I'd have trouble figuring out which one I haven't done. But I know I need to do number four. Oops, that was still heating. Excuse that a moment. Hot. Okay, let me turn the camera back down and see what.
So there's our pattern. Just fold four times. And next I want to do my purple ones in amongst that. So I need to get the hot foil stamp off. And it's going to need to cool down for a minute or two before I handle it. So I'm going to stop the camera there and start cutting some foil in the purple and then come back to you and show you the positioning for the next bit. Okay, welcome back. So we've got that far. And now I need to reposition my hot foil stamp to do some foiling in the purple. So originally the hot foil stamp, let me make sure I've got my one at the bottom, yeah, my hot foil stamp would have been in that position roughly. Okay, and now I need to move it so that I end up with my leaves kind of spread out and in a different place, but also I still need to make sure that it will fit on the go press and foil. Okay, when the card is centered. So let's think about that. So if I kind of bring it around there, I think that might work. No, maybe, maybe more like that. So I need a big enough gap down this side for the white edge and how much the card sticks out. Okay, so I think I'm going to go for that. Okay, and see if that fits. I'm going to use my magnet, set that to one side and get my hot plate. Let's tidy up some of these bits of foil. There we are. Okay, so you can see that. So I've still got my centre mark at the bottom. And I've still got my centre mark. Actually, it doesn't matter, I've got my number one down there my centre mark, I can go there, put this down, take the card off and see if it fits. And it does. Okay, it's nearly to the edge, but not quite. So that will do nicely. I'll put that out of the way. So now that needs to warm up. And while it does, let me bring my samples back. So this is the one we've done with half of the laurel leaf and that's from the laurel wreath rather and that's from the uh, Peaceful Peonies collection. Okay, part of the two part set. And uh, I've buried it on the desk here somewhere. Yeah, there, on my cooling mat. So that's that one. Okay. And the other one I, I did not today, but another day, as an idea, was that the thin ferns, and that's from the, the Cella V collection that was out a few years ago. Um, and that would have gone kind of on like that, and then been foiled lots of times, and then moved to the other position, and foiled four times again. Okay, and now I'm doing the thorny branches. Okay. And it, I'm just trying to give you ideas because you might have other hot foil stamps that would be absolutely ideal for this. Um, it's just a matter of having to think about how you could work them around a circle. Okay, so I think that should be getting hot now. So I need to do my test again. So I need my, my piece of card. And I can use the piece I've already foiled on. So I'm going to be overlapping them anyway. And I'm going to use a piece of my scrap foil, or maybe a couple of pieces, and do a test foiling, just to see if the number of shims is the same with this foil as it is with the other foil. Because even though they're the same make, it can vary. So let's see where... I'm not worried about getting over foiling. Let's have a piece there. And put a piece across there. And put my card on, on there, and then my shims. There we are, let me just 
straighten the camera a bit. I think that's better. Right, now let's go around, around there a bit more. Okay, so that's just coming back to temperature. There we go, green light's on. And despite the fact that um, it's only a small test area, I'm still going to roll twice because it's still a big hot full stack. The leaves on this have quite flat areas, so I want to make sure I've rolled enough for the, the foil to attach. Looking good. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. Not quite foiled on the edges. I think it'll be fine. Okay, we'll go for it and see what happens. That might be where we have to stick a butterfly, but we'll try. Okay, so, big piece of foil. The same routine as last time. I want my foil that way. There we are. That way, maybe. So the whole thing is covered. Right, and then my card, so I want my number one. Lined up, my piece of tape. My shims. Make sure it's not going to suddenly start flashing red. There you see, there it goes. Sometimes when you just put the lid down and press a bit, it realises how much heat's been lost while you've been loading things up with the lid open. That's usually about 20 seconds. See how we've got on with this foiling. There we are. It's, it's got one or two bits that have missed, but I can't see any apparent reason for it. But I think it'll it will just it'll all blend in in the end, so I'm not going to worry. Number one, number two. Oh, 
could be no, it could be texture off of my shims. So maybe I'll just change the order the shims are in. It's flashing red. I'm just going to wait for it to go green. Yeah. wind quite slowly over this middle part of the hot foil stamp some of it's due to the, the texture that's actually in the car now from the previous foiling so it don't necessarily look perfect foiling all the time you have to think of what the overall effect's going to be that's it. right so that's two number three much quicker than you imagine because you don't have to keep reheating from scratch Again, at this point, I'm glad I haven't got to try and figure out which is the next one to do. I know it's number four. I'm going to turn the camera back around. Okay. 
Okay, so the last piece, I'll just take the tape off. So there we are. So it looks quite messy in the middle. Yeah. But if I get my sentiment I made, and I know it's the wrong colour. If you can imagine, maybe a bigger sentiment. Just the outside area showing. I think that's going to look quite nice. So I'm going to finish the cards off and post the pictures on the blog. On my blog post that goes through this video. Okay. So look for the finished results there some of them will be will have been on the um, video thumbnail okay but as i say do scroll down to the video description and have a look for the link to the blog post okay it'll be on the couture creations blog um and there we are reef building using a variety of different hot foil stamps where's the other one gone never mind so where are we? Oh, there it is. There we are. And that one. So, small hot fall stamps, big hot fall stamps. Think of using them, as I say, repeat patterns for reef building. Okay, thank you for watching.